is happening fishing friends welcome to another episode of Debo's fishing and today we need to talk about frog rods picking a frog rod has a lot to do with personal preference you hear people all the time saying pick this rod up it's the best rod out there well then how come you go over to somewhere like tackle warehouse and you look at the frog rod section and some of the rods are slightly different some of them are completely different but as an angler looking to pick out a rod it's much more important to understand the information behind why you should pick a certain rod instead of just having someone say, pick this one, it's the best. Especially if you're a beginner bass angler, it can be very hard to determine what's important in a frog rod, what's not. Well, I've had a lot of people ask me about frog rods and I tend to break it down into three important sections. Number one is gonna be the length of the rod, which one's right for you. What type of power and action should you pick in a frog rod? And finally, you have to think about how and where are you gonna fish your frog? What type are you gonna throw? All that does actually come into play when you pick a frog rod. Finally, I'll tie it all together, pick a few scenarios, and try to help you determine what kind of frog rod should you pick up. So the first thing to consider when you're choosing a rod for frogging is the length. Now, a lot of people will tell you, well, pick a rod that matches your height. People are like, bro, what's that even mean? Honestly, a lot of that's gonna come with experience, trying different rods, trying different lengths. I'm six foot one, and I can fish up to a seven and a half-ish foot rod quite comfortably even when I'm fishing tip down baits like a frog or something where I'm moving the bait with the tip of my rod down. But what's that mean for you? Well, you're really just gonna have to experiment and try. Of course, a shorter angler is probably gonna go wanna go with a little shorter rod. Taller anglers can get away with using a longer rod. But I can't tell you which length is right for you. However, different length rods definitely have their pros and cons. So a long rod, contrary to belief, length does matter. A longer rod is definitely gonna allow you to cast farther. The longer the rod you have, the more load you can get on it and sail that bait out there farther. A six foot six rod is not gonna cast as far as a seven foot 11 rod. Additionally, a longer rod is gonna allow you to take up more line on the hook set. Say for instance, you have a six foot six rod. It starts here, you set the hook here. You take up that much line. However, you have a seven foot 11 rod, the tip goes out here, you set it, you just took up that much line just on the hook set itself. A longer rod will pick up more line. That's especially important when you're fishing a frog when they're buried in the vegetation. As soon as they grab that frog and take it under, you wanna take up as much line as you can to set that hook. However, longer rods do have their drawbacks as well. A longer rod is not as easy to work. When you're working a tip down bait, so you know a jig you're working with the tip up here, when you get into a situation where the tip's down and you're working it down here close to the water, a longer rod complicates things. Especially if you're a beginner bass angler and you're fishing from the bank, you're gonna be beating the tip on weeds and rocks and into the water. And even if you're a boat angler, maybe even a shorter angler on a boat, you're gonna be smacking the water with it, the side of the boat. So you have to consider that when you're choosing your frog rod. Additionally, a longer rod is not gonna be as accurate. If you try to do a little roll cast with a seven foot 11 rod, you're not gonna be anywhere as near as accurate as if you were fishing a six foot nine or a seven foot rod you can get it into places you just can't with a long rod. The second category to consider when choosing a frog rod would be the power in action. When we're talking about the power of a rod, it really just refers to how much power does it take to put a flex in that rod. Not where it flexes, just how much power it takes to do so. When it comes to frog, and I think there's three powers that you can rely on, a medium heavy, a heavy, and an extra heavy. I would never go below a medium heavy rod for frogging. Medium heavy power rods are great for smaller frogs and a lot of the plop frogs. You want a rod that's got a little bit of tip and a little bit of bend when you're fishing one of those faster moving frogs like a, a Teckel Sprinker frog or a Toad Runner or one of the Stanley Ribbit frogs. That frog is moving so you're not going to get as good of a pause hook set as you would with something like a little popping frog. Now when you move up into a heavy power rod, some of the heavy power rods are a little bit higher on the spectrum, some are a little bit lower. And you can tell what type of heavy power rod it is by looking at the lure weight ratings. Some heavy power rods are rated for lures up to two ounces. Some of the other heavy power rods are only rated for lures up to an ounce and a quarter. So when you move up to a heavy power rod, oftentimes you'll lose a little bit of that castability. The medium heavy power rod loads a little bit easier and you can cast farther with it. You're also gonna lose a little bit of that workability. A medium heavy power rod usually has a little bit softer tip and is easier to work a bait and walk it. However, when you step up into a heavy power rod, you gain sheer brute force. You get past that tip and into the backbone a lot quicker with a heavier, stouter rod. Now, when you move away from the heavy power rods and into the extra heavy power rods, you've just entered broomstick status. That's one of the common misconceptions you'll hear about frogging is, man, you have to have an extremely stiff rod. That's not always the case. However, there are certain times when you need an extremely heavy power rod like that. So when it comes to frog rods, there's really three main types of actions you'll see. A moderate fast, a fast, and an extra fast. And it's really like a scale. Let's say you go all the way on this side to a moderate fast action rod. 
great for castability. That rod loads up really well. It bends all the way down toward the middle. You can sling a bait out there a mile. Additionally, it's a lot easier to work a bait when your rod has more give at the tip. And finally, a rod with a little bit more bend in the tip is better for moving baits, just like you do with a spinner bait, swim jig, chatter bait. You don't want an extremely stiff rod. You want something with a little bit of bend. That way when the fish eats it, there's a slight delay before you set the hook. Now, as that scale moves and you get away from the moderate fast up into an extra fast, what do you gain? If you're fishing in really thick stuff and that fish hits it and takes it all the way down in the vegetation, you don't want a big delay. You want to get right into that hook set as soon as you can. When you set the hook, it's going straight from the tip into the hard backbone quick. Now, the third category to think about is what kind of frog fishing am I going to be doing and what kind of cover am I going to be fishing around? When you hear people talk about frogging, it really boils down into two different ways to frog fish. Number one, you see the vast ocean of lily pads and scum and thick vegetation, long rods, long casts, with generally pretty thick vegetation below. But on the other end of the spectrum, you've got a lot of bank anglers fishing parallel to the banks that are generally pretty open. A lot of laydowns, sparse cover, grass lines, or just kind of scummy moss on top, but really nothing below. Two completely different scenarios and rods with different attributes will definitely benefit in each different scenario. I know that's a lot of information to throw at you, so let's put all that stuff that we just talked about into some real world applications. Take for granted scenario number one. A lot of you bass anglers out there, especially beginner bass anglers, are gonna be fishing a lot of ponds or your local lake from the bank with kind of limited access. A lot of those ponds that you're gonna be fishing are gonna be big round ponds or long ponds with a bunch of sparse vegetation, scum, not a whole bunch of wood and stuff that you're fishing, kind of grassy, weedy, well, spicy looking ponds. In that scenario, long casts are crucial. You wanna cover as much of that scum and grass as possible because oftentimes you have limited access to where you can go. I would choose a heavy power rod in that scenario just in case the vegetation gets a little bit thicker. And for the action, I would go with something from a moderate fast to a fast tip to ensure you can really load that rod and make a long cast. For the rod length, I would say something around a seven to seven and a half foot rod depending on what you're comfortable with. Remember, you're gonna be working that rod tip down. So if you're in places that have tons of grass and weeds, yeah, might want to err on the side up a little bit shorter. So try to find that type of rod in your favorite rod brand. I don't care what it is, but those specs will definitely help you when you're fishing those sort of ponds. Mine happens to be the seven foot two frog specific rod in the Speed Demon Pro series. I love this thing. It is absolutely filthy. No, really, it actually is filthy and cheesy for me fishing frogs. In all honesty, this rod has been perfect for those sort of ponds. It's a seven foot two heavy power rod, but it's on the little bit lighter rod of the heavy spectrum. Perfect for those moving frogs like a Teckle Sprinker, but it's still got enough backbone if you get that fish down into the weeds and muck, you can still pull it out. Scenario number two, whether you're a bank or boat angler, let's say you don't have those big grass mats to fish, not the big huge spots of cheese and lily pads. You're fishing places that are more sparse, grass lines, lay downs, fishing parallel to an open bank jetties, riprap with some vegetation mixed in. In those scenarios, accuracy is key. So you're gonna to wanna to drop down to a little bit shorter rod. In these scenarios where you're not fishing extremely thick grass and extremely thick cover, you can get away with a frog rod that's more toward the medium heavy side of the spectrum. I would go with a fast action rod. It's the best of both worlds there. You'll still be able to get good accurate casts. You'll be able to work a bait on the way back. And if it does get you into a little bit of wood, you'll still get in that backbone pretty quick. I've been using the same rod for those sort of scenarios. I'm very comfortable with a seven foot two rod. I'm pretty darn accurate with this thing. It's excellent when you're fishing parallel to banks. I've caught quite a few bass this year just fishing parallel to riprap, grass, and wood. You don't always have to be in the thick cheese to catch frogfish. Now the final scenario would be when you're fishing a lot of really thick cover, really thick vegetation, a lot of bushes and laydowns where the wood's a lot more prevalent, you're gonna wanna go with a heavier rod. If you can get away with it, I would go with as long as a rod as you can. It's definitely gonna help on that hook set to get that fish turned around and back to you sooner. And if you get that fish hooked and it takes you down in the real thick vegetation, a heavier power rod is just gonna be able to winch that fish out a lot easier than a lighter power rod. So that's when I've been bumping up to this. Yes, the seven foot five flipping rod, still in that Speed Demon Pro series. You might say, well, it says flipping. This doubles amazingly as a thick cover frog rod. I've been using this on a couple ponds that are really thick, have a bunch of gross stuff down underneath, and this has winched them out with no problem. So if you're a bank angler on a budget and you've already got a different rod that you've been using for flipping and pitching, it's a pretty stout, heavy rod, don't be afraid to spool up a different reel with some 50 or 65 pound braid, put that on in the morning, and use that flipping rod of yours for frogging in the morning. Once that sun comes out and the top water bite kind of dies down, take that reel off, put your other reel on that has some 20 pound fluorocarbon and start flipping that brush. It's a great way for all you newer anglers out there to stretch the different types of combos that you have and do more with them.
So I ask you to please leave a comment below and let me know what type of combo you use for frogging. Power action, all that stuff. I would love to hear it. Or for all you beginner bass anglers out there, if you have any questions or you've got a few different scenarios and you want to ask me, what would I recommend? Let me know below. I would be happy to help as I can. Of course, I appreciate all you fishing friends out there. I hope this helped you all. And uh, till next time. distinction by that master hand, that connoisseur and dilettante, that untiring seeker of you.